Welcome to the Take Your Apprenticeship podcast. The Take Your Place team is made up of five universities and nine further education colleges from across the east of England. We are an impartial project dedicated to giving you the information you need, regardless of where you're applying to study. Since 2017, we have worked with over 30,000 students from 100 different schools, colleges and sick forms, helping them to explore their options and discover their potential. Now, we hope to help you too. In this podcast series, we will explore all aspects of finding, applying for and succeeding in an apprenticeship. Through talking to experts and current apprentices from a variety of industries, we will help you explore your future apprenticeship options. In this episode, we will be talking to Lily Sinclair from Ask Apprenticeships about the application and interview process. I'm Lucy and I work as a higher education champion for Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge. Lily was interviewed by my colleague Eloise, who works for the University of East Anglia. In their conversation, Lily talks about the best time of year to look for vacancies, top tips for both in-person and virtual interviews, and what to expect if you have a group interview. Welcome to this week's episode on the apprenticeship application process. Lily is going to share some of her expert advice with us today. Can you tell everyone a little bit more about your role? Hello, my name is Lily Sinclair and I'm the Ask Delivery Coordinator for Norfolk and Ipswich. I work for a company called CXK, but I deliver the Ask programme on behalf of the National Apprenticeship Service. Thanks, Lily. So let's start today off with when do applications open and is there a certain time in the year you should look for them? So usually applications open between September and March, but obviously apprenticeships can be open all year round. I usually say to students, depending on they're on year 11 or year 13, I would normally say if you're going into those years, I would normally say start looking beginning of the year. So you've got a chance to see all of the vacancies that are coming out, not just looking just September and March. Have a look as early as you can. So you've got that ability to see as much as you can. What does the application process look like? Are there any different stages? Yeah, so usually the application process is straightforward. So once you apply for any apprenticeship, you may be shortlisted and then you'll receive an initial interview. So this could be over telephone or video. And you could then go on to do your online test or an assessment centre. And obviously, if you're successful in that stage, you then may be invited to a formal interview, which is normally face-to-face. Sometimes you might just be shortlisted have a telephone interview and then go straight to the face-to-face interview. A lot of employers vary with the application process. Due to COVID-19, the application process may change slightly. So for example, your initial interview could still be over telephone or video call. Assessment centres are most likely to be cancelled unless that can be done online. Formal interviews, so the face-to-face interviews, are most likely to be carried out over the phone again or video call. And your start dates as well could be pushed back a little bit or you may receive training first online. And in some cases, you can start virtually depending on the job role. So for example, if you're applying for a business apprenticeship, you could possibly start from home. Um, whereas if you're applying for, I don't know, an apprentice electrician, that might be a bit tricky to start from home. So that's something else to look into as well. And I've heard from previous discussions that I've had that the military and the NHS can be a little different. Is this true? Yeah. So if you are thinking of applying for certain places such as the NHS or the military, then I normally say be prepared for a slightly longer process. For example, the army can take a while to shortlist and then give an interview date. So if this is something you are thinking of applying for, look at other different avenues as well and give yourself a wide choice of apprenticeships to apply for. Don't just apply for the military if you're interested in that. Apply for other jobs roles that would fit around the same kind of thing you're interested in and again the same for the NHS as well. I think that's really helpful. You mentioned interviews, what might these include? So the interview would include different types of questions. You'll have your why do you want this apprenticeship? Why should we hire you? A lot of employees as well ask for your relevant strengths and experience so if you're not too sure what your strengths are, you can have a little Google and kind of find out what strengths people have and you can sort of pick out the ones you think you may have. Now, what the employer wants you to do is give examples of when you've used that as a strength. So, for example, if you say your strength is teamwork, you could say I played on the football for six years, whatever it may be, that kind of thing. So they want you to give an example. And obviously questions like when you've had a difficult situation, how would you respond if you had made a mistake? They'll ask a variety of different questions tailored to the job role. But ultimately, they want to find out if you will be suitable for their company. Sometimes the employer will ask you to attend a trial shift as well. 
So this can be a chance for you to show the employer your strengths and also a chance for you to see what the company is like to work for. And also they can see how you can cope under different situations, if there is any you know, difficult situations that pop up, how you deal with those and also how you pick up new skills as well. Some really great points you have highlighted there. And I think trial shifts are really important because it allows you the opportunity to see if the apprenticeship be appropriate for you as well. Don't just see it as something to be nervous for in an interview. It's actually a really great opportunity for yourself. I know in my personal experience, the interviews I've attended have varied greatly. Can you describe the different interview types in a little more detail? Yeah, so interviews are usually face-to-face, but given the current situation we are all facing, these are likely to be either telephone or a video call, as I previously said. Usually you'll be interviewed by one person, but sometimes you may be facing a panel of interviewers. Don't be nervous or anxious about this as they are usually people from different roles within the company and they just want to find out a bit more. Maybe you can ask them questions about what they do as well. And what are they kind of looking for? So if you had a group interview versus a one-to-one, is there certain skills they're looking for in those interviews? Yeah, so with your group interviews, they'll normally look for how you can work well in a team. Sometimes they'll look for what kind of role you play in a team as well, which is also another question you may get asked in an interview. They want to know if you're like the leader, if you're the organiser, problem solver, thinker, listener, whatever it may be. And that's kind of what the group interviews usually are for, especially if your role you are applying for is quite a team-based role as well. Is there anyone you can suggest for those that are listening where they can ask for some support in preparing for this? Yep, so if you are listening to this and thinking, where can I receive further support? You're all so lucky to be surrounded by a variety of people who can help. So obviously, your first point of call would be your careers advisor. They'll know you better than we all do. They can help you with your different pathways. You could also speak to your NECO HECs as well if you've got one in the school. They can help you out with any personal advice. I also offer one-to-one support and advice. So obviously, if that is something you are looking for, just let your teacher know and we can sort something out. You've also got family members who may be recruiting apprentices. So you could ask them what their recruitment process looks like. You might have a friend who perhaps has gone through the apprenticeship recruitment process or is going through it. You could also ask them questions as well. And finally, Lily, can you summarise everything we have talked about today into some top tips to remember? The last few bits of advice for you would be to make sure you research the company, find out what they're about. So you go into your interview prepared. Check spelling and grammar in your applications as well. If you're not confident doing it yourself, you could get a family member or a teacher. Ensure you dress appropriately. Even if you are being interviewed over a video call, don't sit in your pyjamas because it will make you look silly. Make sure you are wearing something suitable. Make sure your background is suitable as well, not messy, pants all over the place because Obviously, they'll take that into consideration. You can sometimes blur your background as well. So that could be something else to look into. If you are being interviewed via video, make sure your battery is charged up on your phone or your laptop. Do you have strong Wi-Fi? You might need sometimes specific kind of an app that you might need to download. So again, look into that. Make sure you're in a quiet room if you are being interviewed over the phone or over video call. Don't let anyone disturb you as much as we love our pets. Shut them out of the room so they don't interrupt you, distract you. And also my last bit of advice would be to make sure you've got a notebook or paper to hand with any questions. So sort of the the week leading up to your interview, I would write down any questions you have about the role, but also during the interview, you could write down anything that they mentioned that you might want to remember. Some great tips there. Well, Lily, you've been so insightful today. Thank you so much. Before we go, where can students find out more information or about your resources? So we've got a great website called Amazing Apprenticeships. You can go on there. Teachers, parents, students can have a look on there. We've got loads of resources. Teachers can request support on there as well. So I mentioned about the one-to-one. We've got loads of other different types of support. You can request a planning meeting with me. We can discuss how we can help the students. So yeah, have a little look on there and see what you think. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to subscribe to our future podcasts at soundcloud.com slash take your place or on your favorite podcasting app. You can also find us on Instagram where we are at take your place underscore H-E, on Twitter at take your place H-E, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash take your place H-E. You can also email us with any questions, requests, or just to let us know what you think on info at takeyourplace.ac.uk.